What's up guys, Justin here with DCGessentials.com back with another Blender animation tutorial for you today. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about a way you can create an animation where all of the different parts and pieces of something kind of fly apart and then they fly back together. So we're gonna call this the exploded view animation and let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is actually a model that I've downloaded from the SketchUp. 3D warehouse. So um, you can download that inside of SketchUp. And um, the model's called the Wooden Clock with Digital Indication. And it is by Oleg Shepetko. So you can download that model in the SketchUp warehouse. And then I've imported it using the SketchUp importer extension. I will link to a video about that in the notes down below. But the reason I like this is because when you bring this in, um, these different parts and pieces come in as separate groups, right? So there's separate geometry in here, so I don't need to do like a separate by loose parts or anything like that. Um, and if you have any questions about that, leave a comment down below. But you are gonna want something where all the different parts and pieces are in here as separate objects that show up as separate objects over here in your outliner. Um, so now I've imported that, but what I want to do is I want to create an animation where these parts kind of fly forward and fly back, like we were taking this apart and looking at the way the different pieces come together. This can be a little bit tricky, so we could just tap the A key and select everything and scale it, right? But the problem with scaling it is all that's doing is it's stretching the pieces out, but they're still um, connected to each other. That's a little bit of a problem because we want the pieces to actually fly apart. Right, And so the cool thing about this is each one of these, because they're individual objects, has its own origin in here, which is going to help us out. And so what we want to do is we want to tap the A key to select everything, but we're going to go into our active tool and workspace settings, and you're going to look for the option for transform. And we're gonna select the option for effect only locations. And so what that does is that means that if we were to come in here and scale this, this is only gonna scale these based on their locations in the 3D space. So if I tap the S key, for example, notice how now when I scale these, the different parts and pieces are flying apart, right? And so what that means is that means that gives us an easy way to have all of our parts and pieces come apart inside of Blender. So one thing I'm gonna do is instead of just tapping the S key, I'm gonna tap the S key, and then I'm gonna tap the Y key because what that's gonna do is that's just gonna scale things along this green axis. And so before, the, before we do this, there's something that we're gonna to wanna to do, right? And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to start by keyframing our start and end points. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just going to select this whole thing and we're going to start by tapping the I key and we're going to keyframe the object location. So I'm going to click in here and keyframe the location. Well now what that's done is that's created a start point where everything is in place. And so there's a little trick here and maybe one of you knows why this is. So you would think that the next thing we want to do is pick a point halfway into our animation and then keyframe the locations again. Right, So you'd want to come in here, keyframe this, and keyframe the location. And then maybe just copy this original keyframe and then paste it And our final point. Well, the problem with that, and I think it has something to do with the applying of the rotation and scale. The problem with that is for some reason, if you do it this way, these pieces all come back together, but their rotations are all messed up. And so that's a little bit of a problem. That's not necessarily what we want. So what we're gonna do instead is we're just going to, before we keyframe this middle point, we're just gonna keyframe our end. So we're just gonna go back here. And so I basically just undid this. And so I'm just gonna add a keyframe at frame 100. So I'm just gonna type the I key and I'm gonna keyframe the location again. And so now we have two points in here that are gonna act as our start and our end. Well, now what I wanna do is I wanna scale this on the Y axis, like this, right? So I'm on keyframe 50, and I wanna scale this right here, and then I just wanna insert a keyframe for location. And so you can see how what that did is that added a keyframe right here. Well, now, if you come in here and click play, what that's gonna do is that's gonna keyframe this moving out and it's gonna keyframe it moving back in. So it basically gives you this animation in here um, that you can use in order to create this exploded view. And so then there's a few other things we could do. Like for example, we could add a camera. So maybe just do a shift A right here. I'm gonna hit the zero key. Make sure that you have locked your camera to your view. like 
this. And then now we have a camera that's looking at this exploded view. And so one thing we might wanna do is we might wanna have this camera kind of fly around this exploded view. So to do that, we're just gonna set our keyframe to zero with our camera selected, and we're gonna insert a keyframe that includes our location and rotation. So I'm gonna click right here in order to do that. I'm gonna keyframe 50. I'm gonna orbit my camera around like this so that my camera's over here. And then I'll just insert by typing I another location and rotation keyframe. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna set this up so that our camera flies around this object as we go. And so for this one, I think that you probably could come in here and just select this and just copy and then paste this keyframe. So what that's gonna do is that's just gonna take your camera back, right? So your camera's gonna fly over here as a part of that animation and back over here. And so you could do that however you want. You might just delete this keyframe as well. So not really that big of a deal one way or the other. Um, you might even take this keyframe, select it, and then just tap the G key and just move it to keyframe 100 like this. So then you'll have your camera flying acro across here, but it's gonna be a lot slower. And so then from there, you could render your animation or export your animation. So what I might do, I'm gonna hit the zero key in order to get out of my camera view. But what I might do is I might add a couple lights or something like that so that when this renders out, it's gonna look nice. And then we can just set our clip up so that it has a length of 100. And for now, I'm just gonna set this as an EV render because that way it's gonna render in real time. And then we can just go down to our render settings set this so that we're exporting to, I'm just gonna do an AVI JPEG. I'll go ahead and set my folder. And then we'll just set this to render. So we'll just click on render animation and it's gonna go through and it's gonna render out all those different frames. So you can see how when we do this in Eevee, it's gonna render a lot faster, but we're not gonna get the same quality of image as we would inside of Cycles. And then we'll just go open up our render result. And so if we open that render file up, you can see that it's gonna look something like this. And so from here, there's a lot of different things you could do to adjust this to make it faster or slower or other things like that. But in general, this is gonna let you create a real easy exploded view animation inside of Blender. So that's from in this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you done anything like this? Do you have any tips for this kind of animation? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.